In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the 10.1 inch Nook tablet, which is kind of weird because you don't really hear about Nook tablets anymore. I believe this launched in 2018, but I never had the chance to try one out. So I thought what better time to do it and see what it's like to use a Nook tablet in 2020. Currently, this is $130 on the Barnes & Noble website. I believe that's the only place you can get it, but I could be wrong on that. Now this does come with a 10.1 inch IPS display at 1900 by 1200 resolution. It takes a micro SD card up to 256 gigabytes. It does say up to eight and a half hours of reading, web browsing, and video watching. So we'll have to do a battery drain test just to see how it compares to some of my other tablets. Obviously the main selling point for this device is for books, but in this video, we're gonna test it just like any other tablet to see how it performs. This does have dual band Wi-Fi. The cameras on this one don't sound too great at two megapixels for the rear and front. Now this does only have 32 gigabytes of storage, which I would say is pretty standard for a cheaper tablet like this. Is what makes this tablet a little more interesting than say a Fire HD tablet is it does come with the Google Play Store. This does have two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes storage, but you can expand that up to 256 gigabytes with a micro SD card. It does have stereo speakers and the battery size on this is 6,300 milliamp hours. Now it does say on the box, Android 8.1 Oreo, but we'll have to check that to see if it got an update since it was originally launched. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. Okay, so this is actually pretty lightweight for this size of tablet. Included in the box is a quick start guide. This comes with a micro USB charging cable and charging brick. Okay, so that's an interesting way to do the packaging. It's got a really nice soft touch material here on the back. So that should give you some pretty good grip. Along the top is the headphone jack, charging port, and micro SD card slot. Up in the corner on the back is the rear facing camera. Up on the right hand side is the power and volume buttons. Both speakers are along the bottom. And then on the left hand side, you can see they've got pogo pins. I assume that's for their keyboard case. On the front, up in the right hand corner is your front facing camera. So the screen on this one definitely looks a little bit cheaper than other tablets I've used. Yeah, I don't know, the screen on this definitely looks more like it's plastic versus being glass. So on the front of this, this definitely reminds me of a Fire HD 10. Now obviously, if you have a lot of books that you've bought through the Nook app, you're definitely gonna wanna sign in with your account to have access to all of those. It sort of looks like a regular Android tablet, maybe with some widgets here on the home screen. And then it has some extra shortcuts down here on the bottom. So far it's used 21% of the 32 gigabytes available. So yeah, this is on Android 8.1.0. Bad thing is the security update is only to October 5, 2018. So it's a pretty simple setup here. On the home screen, you've got Welcome to Nook, where you can sign in to access your account and library. You've got a section for recent purchases. And then below that is Shop by Category. And then you get the Play Store and Google Apps right next to that. And then down here at the bottom is just shortcuts to your Nook content. And it even looks like you can remove some of these widgets they have on the home screen. Which is nice that they give you that option if you wanna just use this like any other tablet. The notification shade at the top is just really simple. You get your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb, auto rotate, battery saver, airplane mode, and cast. You can also modify that a little bit to add location, invert colors, and data saver. The only gestures you have with this is jump to camera by pressing the power button twice. And it looks like for the screen lock, you've got none, swipe, pattern, pin, and password. 
So really the only bloatware on this tablet is the Nook and Barnes and Noble related stuff. But the good thing is it doesn't really take up a lot of space. And then the rest is just pretty much Google Apps. Okay, so now that I've tested out this tablet for a while, so the battery life on this is pretty average, I would say. It lasted a little over six hours before it died during my battery drain test, where I had the screen brightness at 100% streaming video. But then what is a little crazy to me is it took five hours to charge this thing back up. So you're gonna spend five hours to charge it for six hours battery life. I don't know, to me that seems a little bit crazy. So just as I expected, the camera on this is really bad, right up there with the Fire HD tablets, and the shutter speed on it is really slow, and this is with really good lighting. So I can only imagine what it's gonna do pretty much everywhere else. Just to give you an idea of what you're gonna get from this tablet, here's a few examples of photos and video. So you can see just how bad these photos are that I'm showing you here. Same thing with video, I'm pretty sure this is one of the worst tablet cameras I've seen so far. The other thing I'll mention on this is the volume is super low for a tablet that has dual speakers. Just to give you an idea, a tablet this size should not be quieter than my cell phone. But unfortunately, it is. Bud has a woofer and tweeter and also one inner mic plus two outer mics on each earbud. They've got ambient awareness and these can be charged through wireless Qi charging as well. Also has Bluetooth 5.0 and you can actually get these in four different colors. White, red, black, and blue. Now if you have some nice noise canceling headphones that you're gonna be using with this on an airplane trip, obviously that's not gonna matter. Now one thing I wanted to see is how good this would be for gaming and it could just barely do PUBG Mobile at the lowest settings and to me it was a little too choppy and laggy and most of the time it would take so long to load the game that it would actually exit you from the match. Of course you could re-enter the match but still. I also tested it on Asphalt 9 and surprisingly it played pretty smooth for that game, which is weird because usually that game causes the most issues. And then it probably played Call of Duty Mobile the best, but personally I don't think I would recommend this for gaming. So I also checked the benchmark scores on this, just because I was curious to see what it would do. And yeah, this is probably the lowest scores that I've seen on a tablet so far. You can see it had a single core score of 95 and multi-core score of 282. They don't actually advertise what processor this is using, but you can see here it is using an ARM MT8167A. So if you're just going to use this tablet for reading, browsing online, with the occasional movie, I guess this tablet would be okay for you. But I personally would not recommend it since it's an older operating system, which probably will never get updated. And just overall, it seems a little too slow at loading pages, and it just lags a little bit too much for me, especially when you can get a Fire HD 10 for about the same price or cheaper. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.
Thank <laughs> you.